Thank you, Ryan. Good morning, everybody. I have the unenviable task of um, trying to motivate you. Uh, th this industry, the travel and leisure sector, has been hit so hard by this COVID that it is very difficult to uh, create a mood of optimism uh, amongst representatives and stakeholders in this sector. But I'm going to try nonetheless. I think there are only two things more difficult to do. And those are firstly trying to climb a cliff that is leaning towards you or trying to kiss a lady that is leaning away from you. I'm going to try my best though. And uh, I have remarkably good news on the broader macroeconomic uh, front. And what we should all try to remember is that what is good for the global economy in terms of returning to a larger degree of normality is good for the travel and leisure industry. So at some point in time, things will start happening. And one of the best examples of that is within a couple of days of the announcement of the first uh, successful vaccine trial by Pfizer, your travel and leisure stocks on equity markets all around the world, especially in the United States, surged by anything between five and 30%. Whilst your uh, big tech companies, including Facebook, including Amazon, took one hell of a beating. Uh, and that was because of a realization amongst people all over the world that uh, there is hope for a return to normal. Your stay at home sectors, which obviously is not good news for aviation, have done uh, spectacularly well this year. Uh, and, and they've actually bred a lot of um, new companies and even new subsectors within the whole communications and digital communications environment. But it has been terrible for uh, travel and leisure. Uh, it seems now as if things can start turning around quite quickly next year. I'm going to go through some macro slides just to uh, show you my objectivity. I'm aware of the fact that there was mayhem in the capital markets. We saw South Africa's bond yield almost go through the roof. At the time, um, end of March, I predicted that the bond yield would uh, recover by at least 300 basis points before the end of the year. And I got that one correct. When all the cynics were talking about 14, 15%, um, the viewers must just remember that a bond yield and the value of the bond are inversely related. So what has happened since end of March is that the value of South Africa's sovereign bonds has increased by a, a very, very impressive margin. So that's good news. I don't always get my forecast right, but when I do, I try to tell uh, as many people as possible. And we've seen the same thing happening to the Rand exchange rate. Um, this, of course, is the value of a dollar. We must remember this. Uh, when this red line declines, it means the Rand is uh, obviously becoming stronger. And once again, I predicted 15 by the end of the year or very early next year. And I'm holding thumbs that I'm going to nail that one as well. There were some of these cynics were talking about 25 rand to the dollar. What a lot of rubbish. Uh, it's, it's clear that these people uh, don't understand economics or, or they haven't been to my lectures. So uh, th this is good news, of course, for importers, the, the recovery. But the rand is still undervalued enough uh, for especially people in capital intensive industries like aviation to um, maybe be in a position to, to export. Uh, especially the refurbished aircraft, which uh, we do in South Africa quite a lot. There you can see the undervaluation of the RAND. If that blue line is under the red line, it means the RAND is un uh, undervalued. Above the blue uh, red line, it's overvalued. And what's interesting from this slide is that you can see there with uh, Ramaphoria uh, in tw beginning of 2018, the RAND was well on its way to overvalued territory when the trade wars and the coronavirus hit us. Uh, and now you can see what's happening as a result of the economic recovery. The RAND is on its way back again. And this is end of October. Um, my guess is that the RAND has wiped out at least another four to five percentage points uh, from its undervalued uh, level. If we look at one of our major problems, public debt GDP ratios, once again, you have these cynical economists that are saying, oh, this is the end of the world. We're falling off a, cl a fiscal cliff. I mean, I wish these uh, cynics would fall off a fiscal cliff themselves because every country in the world has experienced an increase in their public debt GDP ratios. Ours has gone from, uh, this slide is pre-COVID, uh, just below 60 to probably close to 80%. That has happened to every country. This is a universal problem. Fortunately, our debt servicing costs as a percentage of gross national income is still pretty low by international standards, below 7%. Now just picture your, your own company or your 
as an individual, what what are your debt servicing costs? This is now your bond, your card, your payment on your airplane, etc., or your helicopter as a percentage of your annual income. Uh, I'll bet my bottom dollar, it, uh, dollar it's more than 7%. So South Africa has a fiscal problem, but it is not an insurmountable problem. And it can be solved if the economy grows. Because that, obviously, if we go back one slide, if you look at that equation, we're talking about public debt divided by GDP. If the GDP grows, the sum declines. And a lot of our problems can be sorted out if we grow this economy. And that's why we should be eternally grateful for the fact that we have a smart president in this country and a smart minister of finance, and they know exactly how important it is to grow this economy and to create jobs. Because the minute you create a job, you broaden the tax base. Uh, and if that continues, then th this problem will solve it, sort itself out. This slide in a nutshell tells you uh, a, a hell of a lot about where the origin of our problems lie. And that is in insufficient capital formation. Now, capital formation is an aeroplane. It's a tractor. It's the stuff which is usually quite expensive, without which you cannot conduct your business. And government's share of this capital formation is usually infrastructure. And I don't have to tell you what happened at the SOEs. Thanks to the unbelievable incompetence of the Zuma administration and the people that were appointed as heads of state-owned enterprises that did not have a clue what they were doing. Or they were, well, maybe they did. They knew they were going to steal money or get involved in corruption. Uh, their ability to expand infrastructure and, and assist this economy's future growth potential was annihilated. Uh, fortunately, the private, private sector is still uh, in the equation, and I can guarantee you that uh, the other two lines will start moving in the right direction shortly after this pandemic has more or less started disappearing. Other good news is that the world economy is, is improving. Um, please remember that these slides are one-dimensional. It does remind me of the definition of a statistician, who is a person that will tell you if your feet are in the oven and your head is in the freezer. On average, you are quite comfortable, but I wouldn't try that. Now, uh, this is probably not good news for aviation, but uh, I never thought I'd be marginally pleased about a rise in the oil price because this is a V-shaped recovery for arguably the most important energy sector in the world. And it shows you that the world economy is growing. Here you can see no less than six V-shaped recoveries for the PMIs, the purchasing managers indices of the six largest economies in the world. From January down to the depths of April, back right up October to above 50 for five of the six cases. Uh, and despite the second wave, uh, most of these PMIs are still above 50 and the clearest indication of a V-shaped recovery. And this is the second largest economy in the world uh, that you find in China. Speaking of China, it reminds me of uh, uh, the definition of a communist. I actually asked one of the trade union leaders of the more militant trade unions a couple of years ago whether he knew the definition of a communist. He, he obviously didn't. <laughs> he didn't know much about anything. Uh, and I gave him the answer. A communist is somebody who's got nothing, but he wants to share it with you. Um, so uh, just on a lighter note, never in the history of the IMF has there been such a large spread between one year's growth forecasts and the next. Now, if you were to include 2019's actual GDP figures on this slide, you would see seven V-shaped recoveries. And what we should start doing, and it's more difficult for travel and leisure uh, industry, is to focus on the bars above the line because next year will be a solid growth year for virtually every country in the world. Probably not for Venezuela and Zimbabwe, and I think we know why, because of policies of expropriation without comprehension, uh, which is the same as without compensation as far as I'm concerned, and I don't think we'll make that mistake. Here you can see a, a classic example of what COVID did to a company called Uber. Their revenue from rides declined by 75%. Their revenue from eats more than doubled. Uh, the point I want to make is that in the next couple of months, you will see the rides, revenue from rides Get slowly but surely moving back to where it was, and the revenue from it will not necessarily decline by much. 
And the point I'm trying to make is that new subsectors of economic activity, especially in services and in delivery, etc., uh, have been created as a result of COVID. COVID has thrust the fourth industrial revolution upon us. Now there's no hiding anymore, which is essentially in the longer term a good thing. Uh, you can see the surge in global technology companies' revenues. All of this is COVID related. In South Africa, before we look at some impressive Vs, I just want to, us to take one step back. Let's look at short term insurance premiums running at about almost 33 billion Rand per quarter. Now, this is a very good indicator of what's happening in the economy because one doesn't insure fish and chips. You insure assets like airplanes, like cars, like equipment, machinery. And this trend tells you that this economy was certainly on a steady growth path before this uh, stupid virus hit us. Uh, and I'm not naive. I realize that uh, household disposable income will decline marginally this year, probably by four or five percent. But at a level of 53,000 Rand per annum on average per household, this is probably, and nobody knows the answer, but my research indicates that this is probably 10 times the average for this continent that we live in. So quite frankly, I think we can take that knock as long as we start growing again at a rapid rate of knots next year, and that's on the cards. Um, one of the reasons why the recovery has been swift is the fact that almost 70% of our economy is services related. By the way, in the United States and in the United Kingdom, it's 80%. And obviously these sectors are less susceptible uh, to economic shocks uh, and they tend to recover quickly. And now it's V-shaped territory. Mineral sales in August hit an all time record high. Retail trade sales right back where, they, where it was. You can see the traditional December spike is uh, just before that now, you have a f the first uh, leg of that spike is the uh, November because of Black Friday. And from what I've gathered from um, uh, the major credit card companies is that there was in, in um, on Black Friday 14, I think 14% increase uh, in the, the volume of transactions uh, this year. Uh, and that is in a pandemic year, not bad going. Retail trade sales for general dealers, in September, this is running at more than 40 billion Rand a month. That was higher than June last year. So once again, a full recovery. Wholesale trade sales, full recovery. The JSE, that cynical joke about how to make a small fortune on the JSE, you start with a big one, uh, certainly doesn't hold here. If you bought a nice little selection of shares, especially resources uh, on 20 March, you would have been able to make a killing. Uh, well done to the JSE. And then looking forward, growth drivers for next year. Our primary sectors have come to the party when we needed them most. We've had the second highest maize crop in our history in volume terms, the highest ever in rand terms. The productivity of our farmers in this country is spectacular, especially when considering that they don't get one cent of assistance from this government. As a matter of fact, they pay more for electricity than we do. Uh, which is uh, the Afrikaans word is skanda. That that is really um, t terrible. Uh, there's another V, V-shaped recovery for the Agbus IDC Agricultural Conf Confidence Index. And you would have noticed that construction is absolutely central to President Ramaphosa and Tito Mbeweni's new uh, recovery and reconstruction plan, the RRP. Um, it is the most labor-intensive sector in the economy. Economy. It has a pervasive value, value chain, and we can see a V-shaped recovery for building material sales as well, including hardware retail sales. Uh, I suspect part of this is, is that we are uh, working from home, and home is not always conducive to work. Uh, my son in the United States told me the other day, I'm not working from home, I'm, I'm living in the office, <laughs> which I think is, uh, is quite a brilliant uh, expression. Um, and then another pillar of the new uh, recovery and reconstruction plan is buying local. And certainly within the broad aviation sector, which is one of government's sectors which has been targeted for future growth, uh, there has to be some scope because we import just from Asia, just for six manufacturing groups, uh, last year, we imported 165 billion rand of products. These are products 
that we also manufacture in South Africa, but on top of that, we also export them. So this is crazy. We import saucers, you know, porcelain saucers from China. We manufacture them in South Africa and we export them. Why the hell would we want to buy saucers from China? I don't understand this. So there must be one hell of a lot of scope for import replacement in our economy, and that will be one of the drivers. I've got no doubt about that. We've had a structural improvement in our foreign income receipts to income payments ratio, which is great news. And that is one of the reasons, but not the only one, why we have a record cumulative trade balance just below 200 billion rand for this year. And this is in a pandemic year. Well done to our exporters, especially in the mining and agricultural sectors. And then arguably the numero uno growth driver, the lowest interest rates in 50 years. This is exceptionally good news. Um, just on a lighter note, I must tell you that the definition of an economist is it is somebody that will marry Charlize Tron uh, for her money, uh, which is not a bad idea depending on the mood she's in, I'm told. So the lowest prime rate in 50 years, uh, will that uh, remain like that? I think so, because inflation is very, very low. It's way uh, below the top range, upper range of the uh, CPI target of the Reserve Bank. And on this slide, you can clearly see this is a proven inverse relationship between lending rates and durable consumption. Now, vehicles, machinery, aeroplanes, that is what you call durable consumption. So certainly, once uh, we return to normal or we are firmly on our way there, uh, one can expect a pronounced recovery, I believe, in the travel and leisure sectors, also with regard to capital formation. And do not underestimate the power of lower interest rates. We did an um, econometric study at uh, University of Joburg, Prof. Ilse Boota and myself, uh, and we asked the model to tell us what would South Africa's GDP have been today if the real prime rate, with this is now prime minus CPI, it's not intimidating maths, had stayed at 3% as it was when Jill Marcus was governor of the Reserve Bank, the best governor we ever had, uh, and not gone to an average of 5.3 and ultimately 6%, which is a 100% increase in the cost of capital under the current Monetary Policy Committee. And the model told us our GDP would have been 560 billion rand larger today. So let's enjoy the lower interest rates and let's hope the Reserve Bank has some common sense and keep rates low for as long as possible. I love this slide because it um, tells you that our president is doing the right things. You can see uh, the Ramaphosa effect immediately after he uh, became our president. You can see the Zuma effect uh, with a state captured dec declining trend in foreign direct investment. Well done, uh, uh, Mr. Ramaphosa. Thank you very much. Uh, and this is probably my, my favorite slide of all times. Uh, the APSA BR Purchasing Managers Index in Manufacturing in South Africa has reached an all-time record high in October 2020. This is amazing stuff because this tells you that business confidence has improved remarkably. And if we look at next year's growth forecasts, um, uh, my forecast, second from right, uh, represented by the Optimum Investment Group. Uh, all of these expect next year's growth to be somewhere between 2 and 5%. Uh, I'm actually pitching higher now at also 5.5% uh, from a low base. It's quite easy, but there are certainly quite impressive growth drivers uh, that, that are waiting for us next year. Uh, th the best news possible is the fact that three different pharmaceutical multinationals. Three different ones have announced uh, huge success with their trials for a vaccine. And the word is that some Americans may even get this before Christmas. Certainly early next year, there will be a global drive, uh, vaccination drive, which probably means that the first quarter of next year may still be tough, especially for travel and leisure and especially because of the second wave. But shortly afterwards, uh, one can expect businesses, industries to pl start playing catch up. Uh, and and uh, hopefully, hopefully from the second of quarter of next year, we can uh, look forward to brighter days, blue skies uh, and safe travels for a hell of a lot of people. Thank you very much.